Hello, this is David at AppWorks, and this video is going to go over buttons and button bars in FileMaker. So there's two different kinds of objects that you can put on a layout, and that's button. These two are buttons, and they're button bars. Button bars are uh, slightly different than buttons. Buttons are single objects, and they have four states. They've got uh, the regular normal state, hover state, a pressed state, and uh, an in-focus state, which the in-focus state is basically when you tap to something and it slightly highlighted. You can see this one right here is actually highlighted. Um, button bars also have the same states, only the normal state is called inactive, which is just like you see here, and then there's hover, pressed and then there's active and now you notice that I've finished pressing on that and now it's the active button. Uh, the, the two different kinds of buttons actually are a button and a popover button. Um, when you're in layout mode you, when, and you want to put a button on the layout you have to choose either a regular button or a popover button. A uh, popover button produces this and you can put layout objects on that popover. A regular button just fires a script or a script step. Button bars can also be either a popover or a button. However, if you go into layout mode, you notice you can actually switch back and forth. So when we double click on this button bar segment, you'll see on this tool palette that you can actually choose either a button or a popover button. And now once you do that, you've got a popover. You can choose which direction you want it to pop, things like that. You can choose the title bar or you can choose to not show a title bar at all. I don't usually like to have a title bar at all. However, with a button, you can't actually switch back and forth. You have to choose one or the other. And if you decide partway through your development that, well, this button really should be a popover, you actually have to go up to here and choose popover button and make a new button. And now it'll be a popover button. When you do make a new object, a new button object, you'll you'll always have that little palette. And here's where you can put in the type of button you want it to be. It can just be an icon of some sort, or it can be an icon with text, or it can be an icon with text on one side or the other. In this case, we're just going to use text. I'm not going to get into icons and their usage yet. Now, one of the other main differences between buttons and button bars is that while a button has four states, which I started off talking uh, about, normal, hover, pressed, and in focus, and button bars have active, inactive, hover, pressed, and in focus. Active means you've pressed it. And when you double click to edit this button bar, let's turn that back into a regular button you'll notice that you can actually choose one segment to be active. Uh, this would normally be used for like a nav bar. So in this case, if we imagine that this is a navigation bar, we go back into browse mode, you might imagine that we're on the people layout. So when you click people, there's nothing supposed to happen. But this indicates to the user that you're on the people layout. Oh, I want to go to invoices. You would click that. And now on that screen, you have a similar button bar, only in that one the active button is the invoices button because now you're on a different screen. So that's what typically the active state would be used for. You can use it for other creative ways and uh, I often, if you're not using this as a nav bar and just using it to run scripts, you probably don't want to have an active state. So in that case you go to the active state and you actually want to design it to look just like the other states, so that there is no active state. You can just push the button. The other main difference between buttons and button bars is the text that you can have on a button bar. And this is one of the button bar's strengths, is that when you double click on here, you can actually use the full power of the calculation engine to calculate anything on here. So for example, I could put a function like get current date 
And now that button bar will have the date as the label. Or I can have a field. Let's say it's the full name field. And anything else you can do with the calculation engine, you can actually put into here. It becomes super, super useful. On a button, if you double click here, you really can only enter text. You can use merge text, which is what I've done here, so that uh, anything that you can, if you wanted to insert merge field or merge variables, um, you can actually place that in the label of the button bar. But that's about as far as you can go with calculated text. Um, the, the main difference being if you put a variable in here, a merge variable, and you, you'd have to run a script to create that variable and then refresh the screen before you actually see the label. The button bar, however, dynamically will calculate that every time you refresh the screen. So any, in fact, any time data changes, the label on your button bar will change. So it's a very powerful feature, and I'll get into the, uh, a unique way to use button bars using that feature a little bit later. One of the other key features of button bars is that, for example, if you want to make one of these buttons invisible, use hide object when, and you say, well, we'll just say true for now. That means that this is going to be invisible when I go back into browse mode. Now you've got this gap here where there used to be a button and now there's no button. If I wanted to make this button segment invisible on a button bar by going true, and I go into browse mode, now what we see is that the segment disappears, but the button bar, the length of it, actually stays the same and fills in the gap, which is pretty handy. It means that on any given screen, you can have inversely hidden objects where one is invisible when the other is not visible. Um, you can actually have multiple button segments doing different things and make certain ones invisible when some condition exists. So that becomes a really powerful tool as well. One of the other cool things about button bars I should show you is if you click on a segment in a button bar and you click and hold, you can actually drag it around. So say you want to move sales over to here, and then this segment, you can actually delete it just by hitting the delete key, and this one you can also delete. Here's the other cool feature. If I hit Command-C, or control C on Windows. Uh, now I've now copied this segment and if I go down here I can paste the segment and now I've got a whole new button bar. Uh, if I wanted to add new segments I can just click the plus. You can navigate through them this way. Um, in this particular case I just want to show the final powerful feature of button bars and that is using dynamic text for a layout. So I often use button bars solely because they have dynamically calculated text. So in this case, um, perhaps I wanted to show some text on the layout that was supposed to be not editable and I wanted to calculate something dynamically as well. Um, what I might do is actually take this style and choose one that's invisible. So you can see when I click off of it, it just looks like text sitting on the screen, but it's actually a button bar. And if I double click this and I have nothing attached to it, no script steps, no scripts. Now they won't have a hover state. It won't change when I hover over it. It's got nothing to do and nowhere to go. It's now essentially just a piece of calculated text. I might make the alignment to the left and um, oriented towards the top left. Now if I go into here and I can calculate the text, I might put sales uh, for and this person and paragraph and uh, I can put this display text and when I go back into 
browse mode, I mean layout mode, I can see, now this is just calculated text essentially, displayed on the layout. And when you go into browse mode, it just looks like text. You can't select it, you can't accidentally edit it, it's fixed text, and you can actually, anything that you can calculate in that calculate engine can be placed on a layout in a button bar segment that's not actually a button, doesn't do anything, it's just used for the calculation engine. This is a super, super useful feature of button bars, and I use it all the time. One thing to note here is that the reason we can actually see this calculated value is because I've got a setting in FileMaker under the View menu that says Show Sample Data. And if you don't, the, the default for FileMaker is to show not sample data. So when you make this a calculation in layout mode, you can't actually see what it's uh, calculating to. When you go into show sample data, it'll now show you what it's calculating to. And this is the same thing for fields. Um, say we have this full name field on the layout. When we have view sample data, you'll actually see the data that's in the field. If I turn off sample data, now I see the field name. Most people using FileMaker will design their layouts with the field names so that the button bars just say calculation. But I find I frequently will switch to sample data so that I can see what's being calculated in layout mode. That's about it for button bars and buttons. I find button bars super useful. I use them all the time. And you may find that you there are certain strengths of regular buttons and certain strengths of button bars. Uh, I would encourage you to comment in, down below and let us know which one you prefer and any special techniques you've found with one or the other. Uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.